Hi there. In this video, I'm going to introduce all of the basics you need to know about the graphical modeler, um, also known as model designer within QGIS. So I feel like within the ArcGIS world, model builder is something that's really well known, but actually the graphical modeler within QGIS seems to be a bit more of a, a kind of hidden gem, but actually is a really powerful tool if you want to automate some of your complex workflows and create tools that other people can use to replicate your work. So within this video, I'm going to show you how to create, set up and run a basic model using the graphical modeler. So the example I'm going to use is a model to roughly identify south facing rooftops that might be potential, uh, have good potential for solar panels. So to do that, I've got two layers, one vector layer showing topographic data, buildings, roads and such like. Um, and then a raster layer containing LiDAR elevation data. And they're going to form the basis of my model. So the graphical modeler actually falls within the processing toolbox. So we can get to that either using the toolbox button uh, up here or we're going to processing uh, and then toolbox. Uh, we can actually go straight to the graphical modeler through processing and graphical modeler as well to open up a brand new model. Um, I always tend to do it via the toolbox just because I often have the, the toolbox open anyway, in which case we go here and create new model. And this will open up the model designer window. So it's not quite as drag and drop as the ArcGIS version. Uh, we have to basically use the inputs and algorithm options here to add things, add items into our model. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we can go about this. So one of the first things that I'm going to need to do is actually select particular building features from within my topographic layer. So if I type select within the algorithms menu, I can have a look and actually I'm going to use the extract by expression um, tool to pull out buildings from within my topographic layer. Now, what you'll see is that by default, um, it uses the value option as an input and actually picks up my topo area layer from the layers list. Now that looks great on the surface, but actually if I go down this route, it will hard code effectively that input layer into the model and won't give me the option of selecting a different input layer um, if I rerun the tool in the future. So. Um, I'm going to click OK and ignore that for now. It's giving an error because um, I've not set all the parameters. And um, what I need to do first is actually go back to inputs. And in this case, by input, we've got all sorts of options here that we can use for values, coordinate systems, database tables. Um, but in this case, my input is going to be a vector layer. And I'm going to call it topo area. And I'm going to set the geometry type to polygon because in this case, um, my topographic area layer, I want building outlines, it's always going to be a, a polygon layer. So that just checks that I've got the right type of input. I can now go back in to the extract by expression tool and actually change this from value to model input here. And effectively, this means that the input is, is a parameter and every time I run the tool, I'll be asked to define exactly which layer to use. And that's much more useful if we're running this tool again and again, um, potentially for, for different areas. So obviously, this is an extract by expression tool. So I need to put an expression in. I've put that together already. Um, in my case, I've got a column called descriptive group. Um, and I want to pull out the building attributes from there. And the features that match that, I'm going to call buildings. Although actually, because this is kind of an intermediate layer, it doesn't matter too much if I bother to put a, a name in here or not. And that's all I need to do for this tool. Dependencies allows me to set if I've got other tasks that need to run before this one. Um, but this is the first thing that I'm doing. So I just click OK. You can see that my topo area input is now connected to the tool. And I now have a buildings layer um, that shows as an output. So the next thing I want to do is actually add another input, which this time is going to be a raster layer. I'm just going to call it DSM. And it's mandatory because we've got to have this for the analysis. 
And then with the DSM, I'm going to go back to algorithms and I'm going to look at aspect because ultimately I want to find south facing roofs. Um, and I'm just going to use the aspect tool from within the QGIS raster terrain analysis tool set. So once again here, I'm going to change my input from value to model input. And it's picked up that I've only got one appropriate model input, so it's already set that to DSM. Um, my Z factor is one. And actually, again, this is a working layer, so this time I'm not going to bother to put a, a layer name in here. There, and we can see that is now connected. So I'm only really interested on the aspects um, within the building areas because I'm interested in rooftops. So the next thing I need to do is to clip my aspect layer um, using a mask layer. So again, I just drag and drop that tool into the model here. So my input layer is now going to be an algorithm output. So it's not a, a kind of input that I defined, it's the output of one of the tools within the existing model. And it's picked up again, there's only really one suitable layer, which is aspect coming out of the algorithm aspect. And my mask layer, again, is going to be an algorithm output, and that's the matching features from my extract by expression tool, which obviously um, are actually the buildings. Uh, most of these I don't need to worry about. I'm going to, it's going to kind of leave the CRS as the same. Um, I'm not going to worry about specifying a no data output. Match the extent of the clipped raster to the extent of the mask layer, yes. Um, keep resolution of the input raster. I'm actually going to change that one to yes. Um, and this effectively, um, no, it's not going to be quite my final result. So again, I'm not going to worry about giving this a name for now. So here we go. So I now have clip um, raster by mask. Now I've not given it a named output, so the output isn't actually showing up, but I can still take the output from this and feed it into another tool, which I'm going to do now. And what I want to do is from within the, the aspect calculations within the rooftop areas, I want to find which sections of those are facing south or between southeast and southwest. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use the reclassify by table tool. I'm going to drag and drop that over here. So my raster layer is again an algorithm output because it's the output from the clip tool this time. So it's the clipped mask from alder algorithm uh, excuse me from algorithm clip, clip raster by mask layer, losing the ability to speak. Um, it's only got one band, so it's band one. And I need to set a reclassification table. So in this case, I'm going to go from minus one, um, because negative can indicate flat areas, up to 150 degrees. Um, and I'm going to give those a value of zero. From 150 to 210, I'm going to say is the area that I'm actually interested in. So I'm going to set that to one. And then from 210 to 360 um, is going to be zero again, the areas that I'm not interested in. So anything I'm interested in is going to be classified as a one. Anything else is going to be classified as a zero. And actually, because I'm completely not interested in the zeros, I'm going to go into advanced parameters and actually set zero as my no data value so that those areas basically end up as, as no data. And this is going to be um, my final result. So I'm going to call this one suitable areas. So there we go. I've now created a basic model that takes two inputs, um, extracts some features, calculates aspects, clips the aspect layer to the features, and then reclassifies those areas to just find the ones that are facing roughly towards the south. So I'm now going to, oh, I need to remember to give my model a name in model properties here. It won't let me save it until I do. So I'm going to call it um, solar rooftops. 
Oh, I think I've already got a model called that, so I'm going to call it Solar Rooftops 2. And then I'm going to go save as. Um, I think, in fact, I called my last one Rooftop Solar. So I'm going to call it Solar Rooftops. Um, creative. So there we go. So that's now saved. Um, and I'm going to run the model. And what you should see when I run the model is it now opens up like any other tool that you would normally run within QJS. And because I use these model inputs rather than defining specific layers, it has them as parameters and I can choose exactly what the input file is. So as I said, if I'd kind of added the tool and told it to use specifically these layers, I wouldn't have the option to choose a DSM layer or a topographic area layer here. They would just be hard coded and it would always use those two layers. So that can be useful if you know there's a task you're always going to be using the same layer for. But in most cases, you're going to want to actually create inputs so that you can specify those each time. So my DSM is going to be my LIDAR, LIDAR DSM layer. Topo area is my topo area layer. And I'm going to let them both just go to, to temporary files for now. Hit run. Takes a few seconds, but it's not a big task. And we should now see. So I've now got the building outlines that I've extracted from within my topographic area layer. Actually, if I drag those down slightly, we can then see highlighted in black on top are my potential suitable areas for solar panels. So those areas on the rooftops that are facing between southeast and southwest to capture the most sunshine. And obviously there's much more that I could add to this. I could convert them back to vectors, calculate areas, um, intersect them with the building outline so that I can see the area in each individual building, all kinds of different things. Uh, but for the purposes of this video of showing you how to use the model builder um, in order to create um, a basic model and run it, then I think this, this does the job. So, you know, it would be exactly the same steps if you wanted to follow on and add more complex tasks in. Um, so I hope that's been useful. There are more sophisticated things that you can do, um, and I might come back to those in a future video. But for now, this gives you everything you need to do to build a basic model um, and turn that into a tool which other people can then use to replicate your tasks. And actually, if you want to find that again uh, within the processing toolbox, you can click down here um, and either go to open existing model or actually you should see under the model section within your processing toolbox, uh, your saved model will now automatically appear ready for you to open it if you want to to run it again. So if you found that useful, uh, please like and subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for more videos in the future. Thanks a lot.